and we bless you, God, and we thank you, Jesus, for being everything that we need. Hallelujah. Even the things that we don't think we need, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. We love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And this is what he is to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we make a miracle worker.
think we ought to give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Got a question for you. How many of you know him as a way maker? Don't be bashful about it. If he's made a way for you out of no way, if you've been in a situation you couldn't see your way out, and then, bop, there he was. You need to yell hallelujah to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. When your child was in trouble and you couldn't do nothing about it. Waymaker. When they told you you was about to die. Miracle worker. When you could see no hope anywhere. He was that light. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a great God. God is a great God. Welcome, Redeeming Grace. It's good to see you this morning. I think I'm going to catch somebody totally off guard. Stacy, come here. Amen. We're going to let Sister George welcome the visitors. Amen. Would all of our visitors please rise to your feet? We won't ask you to say anything. We just want to love on you. Amen. If you could just stand up. The ushers are in the aisle. They'll give you some information. Welcome. We love you. They say it like she did this before, don't you? Redeemer Grace, let's do what we do. Let's go out and love on somebody. Amen. God bless. God's house. Oh, how good it is. Together in God's house. Oh, and praise to bless. How good it is. Come on, clap your hands. Come on, clap your hands. Oh, oh, how good it is. Amen. Amen. If we could return to our seats for our responsive reading, and please stand if you're able. Today's title is The Spirit Promise, coming from John chapter 16, verses 7 through 15. I'll read the leader, you the congregation, and we'll read all together at the end. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you, but if I depart, I will send him to you, congregation. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin, because they did not believe in me. Of right righteousness, unless I go to my Father and you see me no more, the judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. 
I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come, and all together. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said he will take of mine and declare it to you. Amen. The word of the Lord is blessed. Good morning, Redeeming Grace. These are your Sunday morning announcements. Amen. 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 Redeeming Grace Church family now has access to an extensive new video library called Right Now Media. It's like Netflix of video Bible studies. Come on here. All right now. Huh. All right. And has a huge library of faith-based videos that you can access whenever you want on your phone, tablet, computer, or on your TV at home. You have free access to thousands of video resources to help you with uh, parenting, marriage, discipleship, and more. It includes content for all ages and stages of life, and all of your family members are invited to set up your own accounts as well. Just go to www.rightnowmedia.org backslash account, backslash invite, backslash R-G-C-C-S-A. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen. People perish for what? Lack of knowledge. Y'all better get some knowledge up in here. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. All 2019 graduates, please sign up in the lo- in the lobby to be recognized for your achievement. Amen. 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 Unified warriors, make some noise in the house. Amen. Unified Warriors Men's Ministry meeting will be Tuesday, May 14th at 6.30 p.m. in the RGC Connection Room. The theme is mentorship. The Unified Warriors will provide mentorship to young men from the Ayers Halfway House Program and the Texas Juvenile Justice Department. Amen. Amen. We're loving God and what? Y'all act like y'all tired. Nah, loving God and loving people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. So please come out at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the mentorship will start at 7 p.m. Light food will be provided. Amen? amen? Amen. Come on out and join the fight at the American Cancer Society Relay for Life San Antonio, Friday, May 17th from 7 to 1 a.m. Yes, yes. We had it originally scheduled for May 3rd, but due to weather, amen, it was canceled and rescheduled for May 17th. So please update your calendars, May 17th from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. The theme is Wizard of Oz. There's no place like hope. Weekly Heights Sports Complex located at 200 Noblewood Drive, San Antonio, Texas. For more information, please visit www.relayforlife.org backslash San Antonio, Texas. Or you can see our very own Deacon is Twyla Varnado. Amen? Amen. There will be a mandatory leadership meeting Saturday, May 18th at 10 a.m. Please make plans to attend that Saturday, May 18th at 10 a.m. Amen? Amen. Men's Day. Amen. Men, make some more noise up in here. Men's Day 2019 will be Sunday, June 16th at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. with guest speakers uh, will be Mr. Sammy Viela, U.S. Army veteran and supervisory special agent of the U.S. Department of Defense, and Mr. Mike Gonzalez, which is the director of PTSD Foundation of San Antonio. The theme is Relentless Fight, Standing in the Gap. Amen? Scripture, Joshua 10, 25, men choir rehearsal dates are May. May 30th, June 6th, June 11th, and June 13th. Men, all you need to do is be able to sing next. What's right next to you, amen? Amen, amen. So we'll see you here for a choir rehearsal. And the choir said, amen. Amen. And glory. Attention all members. Now, y'all, your tax statements. I'm concerned for you. If you haven't picked up your tax statements or filed an extension, I'm concerned for you. Amen? Amen. I need for you to pick up 
up your tax statements, amen, immediately following service today or in our administrative office Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., amen? Amen, amen. Like, share, and follow up all of our uh, follow our new Facebook page at our Grace CSA. That's at our Grace CSA. The RGCCSA app can be found in app stores. You can use our app or go to our website uh, to pay tithes. Uh, <clears throat> You can write a check or bring cash, however you choose to pay your tithes and give your offering unto God. Amen. Amen. Join us for Refresh <laughs> Refresh Wednesdays every Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here in the auditorium. All are welcome. Yes, that means you and you can bring a friend too. Amen. 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 As y'all come in, amen, to get your spiritual gas tank filled up. Redeeming Grace Markets are second Saturdays at 11 a.m. Vendors are needed. So business owners, if you would like a 10 by 10 space, you can get one for $35. For more information, contact Deborah Bez at yahoo.com. That's Deborah Bez at yahoo.com. The multimedia team is looking for volunteers to operate the Proclaim system, stage lights, and video camera. If you can volunteer for one Sunday or even one service, please see Deaconess Twyla Varnado for more information. Now we'll have a quick video. Amen? Amen. Amen, 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 amen. So go check them out. Check them out in the back. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Come and fellowship with us in the Connection Room every Sunday. Immediately following 8 a.m. service, we have breakfast snacks available. Amen? Amen. And follow us on all of our social media accounts and invite friends to check us out, as well as news on our upcoming events and holiday alerts. You can visit at rgccsa.org for our calendar or list of available department and volunteer opportunities. Now, will all the May babies, yes, the May babies, come on down, amen? Come on, May. Bless the Lord. Little Tony, Tony, Tony. Oh, yeah. 
Y'all, I got a question. I thought that Jesus' birthday was in December. He played Jesus and Lord is it that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, uh, I guess uh, Sunday took her day off. Sunday. And V got to work. Amen. So y'all kiss him out. Amen. Happy anniversary to you. Kissy, kissy. Happy anniversary to you. Kissy, kissy. Happy anniversary to you. Got a kiss. It's a little lower brush. about that tall. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to laugh now. He's tall. Happy anniversary to you. Kissy, kissy. Amen. Amen. Twyla, before you leave, come here. Y'all, I want to acknowledge somebody real quick. Amen. Amen. This young lady here, Tweety Bird, she's up here all week long doing behind-the-scenes work. Stuff that she don't even have to do. She's proofing things, finding things, fixing things, inventing things. And I mean, I think we need to acknowledge people. Amen. I was trying to see if I get a tear, but oh, it's, it's, it's right there. Bless you. Yeah, that's, that's my partner, y'all. Amen, amen. But I think, you know, every so often we need to tell people thank you. Amen. And there's a lot of other people that's working every day in the background. And all I want to tell y'all is God sees you. Like they say in the country, God sees you. And uh, he's going to reward you for that. Amen. I know I was out last week. I had a little, a little illness. But I'm good to go today. God is good. Amen. But a week ago Saturday night, there was a little thing called Night of Joy. Well, Benita Ward and friends, it was off the chain. And you know what I was thinking during the, the event was Benita, it's a signed Las Vegas artist. She's on residency, which means she's there all year. They gave her a place to live, and she's working. It. And she came and told us, we do, I do it for free. We had to give her something. No, at least some cab money. <laughs> you know, it was more than that. But God is good. I mean, that's favor. We're getting artists that are being paid thousands of show. They say that she just loves, she's been in this house, and she loves what, what God is doing here, and so she blessed us. Amen? Amen. So uh, let's give God a hand praise for that. As you can notice, Bishop is not here today. He will be, be, he will be back next week. He's recovering. He had to go to a graduation for one of his granddaughter and uh i have more children but he has more grandchildren amen so uh i told him i'm gonna catch you after a while we're gonna, we're gonna get caught up but uh god is good amen. in the back if you have any children i know if you don't normally come in at, at 11 o'clock service we have a little thing called sold out where the children have their own children's church in the back and if you could get your children back here for that you know we will be very appreciative also, you all saw the garden. And I think God is doing some wonderful things by that. Y'all, that garden, who hasn't seen the garden yet? Is it thick? And see, I'm from the country, what we call that. Y'all call it, what is it, what do they call it? When stuff is raised with no additives? Organic. Y'all call it organic. In Carolina, we call it poop-powered produce. And it works. Amen. But God is good. Hey, also, did you see the announcement for uh, Right Now Media? You need to, if you're not signed up for that, you need to get me your email address so I can get you logged into it. And if you have a pen and paper, if you don't have it or already connected, 
sent an email to Pastor Blue. No space. RGC. Okay, I'm, a couple people still looking for their pens. I'm going to give you a second. Write down Pastor Blue, RGC. Dot com. That's Pastor Blue at RGC.com. Pastor Blue at RGC.com. If you send me your email address, I'll get you logged in. And you, when they say the Netflix version, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of letters. They, there are seminars, there are lectures, there are videos, but it's about every topic you can think of to how to raise your child, to how to witness, to how to mentor, marriage stuff teenage stuff, men things, women things, Sunday school, Bible study, breakdown of individual books of the Bible by multiple artists. And the great thing is everything has already been scrubbed. And it's to you totally free. So if you're mentoring someone, if you led someone to Christ, you could use that as your study guide to help them to grow. Amen? Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Men's choir, if you a man, raise your hand. Survey says we correct across the room so far. <laughs> Amen. Now, wives, have you heard your husband singing in the shower? Yeah. Have you heard him singing, walking around the house? Yeah. Have you heard him singing in the car? Yeah. Well, they're qualified to be in the men's choir. Amen. As creatures say, as long as they can sing next to the person. If you can sing what somebody else is singing, you're good. And we need a couple of leaders also. So if you can lead. Now, I'm not Jesus. So if you can lead, let me know. But I can't make you lead if you can't lead. But you can sing background, amen? And we're trying to see if we can get one of the original five heartbeat members, Eddie Kane, to come back with us. But one day we're going to get Eddie Kane back up because he worked it the last time he sung. Amen. Amen. God is good. At this time, who's happy about the Lord? Yes. Amen. 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 Who's doing the reading today? Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Now, this brother is multi-talented. You know, he, he played... He played a, 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 what's that, Jefferson? <laughs> no, nah, I ain't going to mess with you, bro. But praise the Lord, y'all. Good morning, Redeeming Grace. Good morning. Can we please stand? Can we take our tithes and offerings and put it in our right hand because we give God what's right and not left. And repeat after me. This is my money. This is my money. My money represents my time. My money represents my time. My time is my life. My time is my life. And I give my life to the Lord. And I give my life to the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, could you uh, recite along with me our tithes and offerings confession? And let's go. Father, I know that you have a plan for the believers' tithes and offerings. At this moment, I set my heart to tap into the financial plan of tithes and offerings for me. Satan will not rob me anymore in my finances. In the name Thank you. 
deacons and attendants, would you please take your places? You will now hear a word from Pastor Gerald Gay. Of my faith to my bishop in his absence. 
uh, to my church family. Uh, I thank Bishop for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, anytime I'm afforded the opportunity to speak into the lives of God's people, something I take very, very seriously. Uh, and there is a word from the Lord today. Amen. Very familiar passage of scripture. If you'll turn to Genesis, the 37th chapter. Amen. When you're there, let me know you're there. If you're not there, say, hold up. You should be there. It's all right. Right at the beginning, Genesis, first book. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to start at verse 5 through 11, and I'll be reading from the New King James versions. And it says this, now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream which I have dreamed, that we were finding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheep arose and also stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. And his brother said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers. And his, father's rebu and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? So your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to you, to, to the earth before you. And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Amen. And as a subject today, we just like, just like to use, just keep in mind. Just keep in mind. Amen. Let me pray. Father God, I come before you once again as humbly as I possibly know how, Father God. Asking that you come forth, Father God, that your word goes forth and accomplish the thing you want it to accomplish, Father God. And at the end of this service, we pray that some life's soul, lost soul, might come crying, what must I do to be saved? Amen, amen, amen. And also to my beautiful wife today, y'all see we match it. That's when you know you've been married for a long time, she tell you what to wear. Uh, <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. So, familiar passage of scripture. Joseph the dreamer. Joseph the dreamer. Dreams, dream. Bishop told me something a long time ago. He said, if you're going to dream, you might as well dream. Yeah, that's what he said, dream big. He said, because ain't no point in dreaming small, because we don't serve a small God, so why would you dream small dreams? Amen, amen. So we have Joseph here. Joseph has a dream. And because of this dream he has, his brothers hate him. Now, that wasn't the only reason. If you go, if you start from the beginning of 37, his father had also made him what we call a coat of many colors, a tunic of many colors. They hated him for that. And you would wonder, why would you hate somebody for a coat? Well, here's the thing you have to study. Joseph's dad, Israel, Jacob, made him a coat with sleeves. Now, sleeves are significant because back in those times, if you had a coat without sleeves, it meant that you were subservient or a slave. And because you couldn't have sleeves because you had to work. But if you had a coat with sleeves, it meant that you were a part of the upper class, the upper crust, aristocracy, as we would call it. You know, we lived in the dominion. It's something like that, right? So that's what that meant. So his brothers were saying, or, or royalty. Most of the time when you see people with sleeves on coat, it was royalty because the king didn't have to do nothing so he could have a coat with sleeves. And so now his brothers are mad at him because he has this coat of many colors his father has made him. And now he has a dream. And in the dream, he says, basically says to him, one day I'm going to rule over you, right? So he has favor. From the father. Hmm, somebody missed that. He has favor from the father. Right? Now, here's the thing. A 
about favor God showed me. With favor comes opposition. Huh? With favor comes opposition. But here's the thing about the opposition with favor. It's, it's the weirdest, isn't it? The weirdest thing that seems like the people you love offer the most opposition from your favor. Huh? And you would expect, because you look at this, if if he has these dreams that says, one day I'm going to rule over you, you guys are going to bow down to me, which means he would have a position. Then if you're my brother and sister, if I'm the king, then that makes you the king's brother or the king's sister. So it has to be some perks to me being blessed. Because I be blessed, maybe I can be a blessing to you because you're my brother and my sister. But most people don't look at that. They become envious and jealous of you because you have favor. Not of your own doing but you have favor. Huh? So there's always an opposition when it comes to favor. Now, what happens as, as we go on a little further through the story, his brothers are envious of him. They get mad about this, and they don't like Joseph. One, because Joseph is also a tattletale. Let's, let's be real. You know, nobody likes to snitch. Because his brothers would be out. They're supposed to be tending sheep, and his dad would say, go check on your brothers. And Joseph would come back and tell the truth. Uh huh? He would tell the truth. He'd say, Pops, they out there messing up. They ain't doing their work. They ain't doing what they're supposed to do. And so they say, Okay, not only do you have faith, but you a snitch. We don't really like you because the Father <laughs> favors you. Uh huh? So they see him coming. His dad sends him out and they see him coming. And what happens is they say, Here comes that dreamer. And the snitch. Say, so here he comes again. So it says that they plotted to kill him. But isn't it funny that when God shows you favor or puts you on assignment, that he always derails the enemy? He always derails the enemy because he says, I have something for you. Dreams, dreams, dreams. Because we've all had dreams. Here's something. Thank you, God. Here's something. You remember when you were little? And you say, this is what I wanted to be? How many of you actually became what you wanted to be when you said that when you were little? A dreamer. You were derailed. Huh? Because if you seen something and you said, I wanted to be that, God was letting you know what, who you were and what your potential was. But due to life, life happens to all of us. We get derailed and now we haven't followed our dreams. Huh? We haven't followed our dream. Now, what happens is his brothers see him coming, and they say, let's kill him. Then another brother says, no, nah, no, nah, we, we can't kill him. You know, that's Pops. That, that's his favorite. We can't kill him, and we don't want that blood on our hands, which means that they understood there was something in, in him as well because they said, we don't want this blood on our hands. So they throw Joseph in a pit. Hmm. They throw him in a pit. And now once he's in the pit, the funny thing is to me is after they throw him in the pit, they go eat. They sit around. <laughs> they start eating. You're like, ain't nothing happened. He has to be down there in the pit, you know, hey, hey, what y'all doing? Let me out of this pit. It says they sit down for a meal. And then the Midianites come and they sell him. Here, here, here's the thing about a pit. I would imagine Joseph was sitting there that I had this dream, these visions of grandeur. And now I am in a pit. Hmm. Sometimes life puts you in a pit. Huh? But let me tell you something. If you are in a pit right now, I don't know who this is for. If you are in a pit right now, if what you see is not what God shows you, that thing is only temporary. Huh? That thing is only temporary. It's only temporary. So he's now in a pit. He said, I had these dreams of grandeur, and the people I love have practically derailed my dream. The people you love get in the way of what happens to you. Hmm. So here's what happens next. Next they sell him, it says, for 20 shekels of silver, and he's sold to Potiphar, basically. Goes to Potiphar's house, starts out as a servant, and now he becomes, let's say, his personal assistant. 
He says, here, Joseph, I'm going to hand everything over to you. Everything over to you. But just keep in mind, this all starts with a dream. Just want you to just keep in mind that this all starts with a dream. And so he's in Potiphar's house, does everything. Potiphar doesn't even know what he has because favor is on Joseph's life. Just keep in mind he has favor as well. And as he goes through that, Joseph starts to grow up, becomes a handsome man, and the wife starts to lust after him. Time and time again, she asks him, oh, come sleep with me. Joseph refuses to sleep with her. Then what happens? Out of anger, spite, and envy, she lies on him. She lies. Because he refuses to do the wrong thing because he understands that he has favor. Huh? Because sometimes you have favor and you think because you have favor, it gives you the ability to do what you want and you think it'll be okay. See, here's another thing you have to know. Your favor is connected to your obedience. Huh? Your favor is connected to your obedience. And if you can't obey God, then don't think the favor will always be there. See, because favor was free. It ain't something you earned, something, something you get. Favor is free. So, Joseph refuses, and she says she lies and said he tried to sleep with me. Now, you understand that what he had done is punishable by death. So, rightfully, Potiphar should have had him crucified for trying to sleep with his wife, but just the mention of it, because he was a servant in Potiphar's house. But something in Potiphar says, no, I, I, I can't kill him. I, I don't believe Potiphar believed it, but because she said and it was his wife, he had to do something. He had to do something. Because I believe that if he had believed it, Joseph would be dead. But just keep in mind, <laughs> this all started with a dream. It all started with a dream. So what he does is he puts him in prison. So I imagine at this point, Joseph says, here we go again. First, my brothers, now this lady. And what have I done except <laughs> have the favor of God on my life? But I told you, keep in mind, favor comes with opposition. Uh, favor comes with opposition. So they put him in prison. Prison. Hmm. Gets to prison. Once again, favor shows up. And the prison guard basically said, you know what, I can take a vacation. Homie, I'm going to let you handle this and all these brothers. I ain't, I ain't got to deal with that. I don't got to deal with that. Prison. Prison, a place that you are confined. Is it could be that some of you said you had dreams or things you wanted to be, but you didn't get there. Could you maybe have been in prison? Confined. In your mind, you limited yourself to the things you could do. Because sometimes we put ourselves in a prison, and what that does is you don't think that you're worthy of the favor of God. And because you don't think you're worthy of the favor, you imprison yourself. Or you let other people put you in prison because of the things they say. Because that didn't work for you. That didn't work for me. That can't work for you. You can't do that. You're not capable of that. Do you know who you are? Apparently you didn't because you did let them derail your dreams. Huh? Apparently you didn't know who you were. He's in prison. So he has to deal with a bunch of knuckleheads and hardheads. Because you don't go to prison for being good, right? <laughs> right? I never seen somebody do charity work and everything and say, you know what? Because you're a good person, Tony Blue, I'm sending you to prison, bro. Uh, I just never seen it happen. I just never seen that happen. And so while he's in prison, what happens is he meets a couple of guys who had dreams and he interprets their dreams for them. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that no matter where you are or what you're doing, God will make room for your gift in any situation? 
Huh? Isn't it amazing that in a prison, a place you're supposed to be confined and you're supposed to do bad, he still makes room for your gift. So now he's in this prison. He's interpreting these dreams. And he says, the only thing that I ask is that you remember me. Because he told one of them, bro, you dead. <laughs> Basically, he told him, he going to call you. He going to chop your head off. Bro, you all right. <laughs> but you is over, bro. It's over. You know, get your affairs in order. Because <laughs> it's over for you. It's over for you. But, but here's the thing, too, about when you find yourself in these situations where you say, God, you showed me something, but what you showed me doesn't seem to be happening. And we get frustrated, we get down and all that. But here's what 1 Peter 4 and 12 says about that. 1 Peter 4 and 12 says this. It says, Beloved, do not think it. Strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you also may, we also, may also be glad with exceeding joy. So what he's saying is, it's going to be a struggle. Basically, it's going to be a struggle. Because I told you to keep in mind with favor comes opposition. And the book just said, don't think it's strange that you're going to face opposition. Because if you didn't, we wouldn't have a devil, then we probably wouldn't be here, right? So do you think just because you have favor, the devil says, okay, I'm going to leave you alone, right? Huh? Actually, exactly. He comes a little harder because he's trying to discourage you. That's what he's basically trying to do to Joseph. He said, you had this dream about how great you was going to be. People was going to bow down to you. You were going to be great. They were going to rule over you. But where are you now? First, I put you in a pit. Yeah, you were lucky you got out the pit. Now I put you in prison for something you didn't even do. Huh? Huh? That's enough to discourage somebody. Huh? That's enough to discourage somebody. But God continues to make room for his gift. Hmm? He's a dreamer, a dreamer who can interpret dreams for your gift. Now, here's what Proverbs says about gifts. If you look at Proverbs, the uh, 18th chapter, verses 14 through 16, we always read these verses, but we don't. We always say, you know, God will make room for you. But here's here's what it says. It says, the spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? Huh? The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Huh? We always say it makes room, but here's the thing. If you were truly walking in your gift, not only would it make room, but it would bring you before some great men. Huh? So your gift should not only be the best people, but it should take you somewhere. That's what the verse just said, didn't it? Huh? Huh? So, two years go by. And I imagine at this time, Jeff would say, I helped this brother get up out of here. I told him what to do. And he done forgot about me. Because that's what I would have said. Because I would have been saying to myself, when I see, when, when I see the cup bear again, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. When I see Mr. Cupbearer again. Hmm? But here's the thing. While sitting there, Pharaoh has a dream. Hmm. And at that moment, I guess the Cupbearer said, so let me just keep in mind that I remember a dude who can interpret dreams. Huh? Just keep in mind. So, he tells Pharaoh about Joseph. Because now his gift has brought him before a great man, huh? Huh? His gift has brought him before, it has made room and brought him before a great man. Hmm? Huh? Now, here's the thing. He interprets the dream and tells, we know the story. He tells Pharaoh that there's going to be a famine, that we're going to, it's going, this is going to happen. And so he looks at Joseph and he says, you know what? Being that you interpret the dream, 
And you understand this, you seem like you would be the best person to handle this for me. Huh? Now, isn't that strange that through this, what he thought were setbacks were only things to prepare him for where he was when he met Pharaoh. And he said, what do you mean by that, preacher? Well, first, he was over Potiphar's house. He was learning to manage things. He was over everything in the man's house on a small, on a small scale. He had to learn how to manage things. He had to manage the man's money. He had other servants he was in charge of. He had to make sure everybody had food. People were supposed to be where they're supposed to be. Huh? He would have looked at you were a servant, but no, it was preparing him for something. Secondly, he was ready to deal with people who were not honest at all times. Those first from his brothers and now from part of his wife. Because now I can recognize deceit when it comes to happen. Now, you can't be in charge and trust everybody. Huh? You can't be in charge and trust everybody because everybody ain't to be trusted. Huh? Then after that, what happens? He gets thrown in prison. Now he, has to, now he has to manage even a larger group of people on a larger scale. So now I have prisoners. Now I know how to deal with difficult people. Huh? On a large scale. Huh? And I have to make sure all these guys have to do what they have to do. They're where they're supposed to be. So now, all they did was prepare him for his job and management with Pharaoh. It seemed as if these were setbacks. But these were experiences to prepare him where he's at. Hmm. Now, life will sometimes give you setbacks. But here's the thing I've learned with God. What you think is a setback is only a stepping stone to get you to where you need to be. Huh? Because in everything, everything, you just give him praise. Regardless to what it is. Personal experience. Working at Time Warner Cable, pretty good job, this and that. Went through a whole bunch of things of my own fault. You know, was without a job for, what, a month and a half, two months? Yeah. My wife was working. Bill still got paid, still had food. The thing was, though, people would come and give us food. You know? And I'm thinking, okay. Well, let, let's start from the beginning. Let's say, I, I will tell you here, I was a very, very intelligent young man. Like Bridge Price, I could book the numbers, didn't need pencil nor paper. And in my experience, what happened was, a lot of people put their expectations on me. And I thought that that was a curse because people say, you're smart, you're going to do this, you're going to be great, you're going to be great. I said, I don't want to be what you want me to be. I want to be what I want to be. And as a result, I became a rebellious person. Took me to, I mean, I can't tell y'all everything. Like I said, some of y'all might collect the reward money. <laughs> but I took me to a lot of things. <laughs> right? I mean, through everything, through drugs and addiction. Even after I accepted this calling, still doing drugs. Fornicator. I was a hoe. I mean, no other way to put it. Yeah. Because I thought, because like Joseph, the people who I loved the most were not supportive of me that I couldn't get where I needed to go. Huh? In a pit. Went from the pit to prison, literally prison. Drug dealer. Made lots of money. Thought I was all this. Just because I didn't have the approval of people I love to support me and just say, sometimes all it just takes is an I love you. I'm here for you. But now my dreams are derailed because my dream was always to dress like this every day, go into, into meetings and make major business deals. That was my thing. That's what I always wanted to be. CEO, COO. But I let other people derail my dreams. 
because the things God was showing me, I didn't want to accept. Because after all that did, I had the opportunity and I still said, you know what, God, I'm not worthy of this. Because I didn't grow up saying I wanted to be a drug dealer, I wanted to be a drug addict. Who, 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 who went in first grade, who your teacher said, what did you want to be? Who read the hand and said, oh, I, I want to smoke crack. Ooh, I, I want to destroy lives. I want to hurt everybody I love. Nobody says that. But as a result of me not believing in the favor, because I'm here because of favor. I'm here because of favor. But today, I understand the favor. I don't, I don't really care what you think or what you say or how you do it. Because as I went through these times of not having a job, ask my wife. Every day, I would tell her, you know what? God going to make a way. God going to make a way. But this time, I believed what I was saying. Huh? I believed what I was saying. And he made a way. And now, because my job, my other job, I worked at night, couldn't do nothing. Now, I have a daytime job. This is what I do at my job. That's what I do. I stand and look. I make almost $800 a week to stand and look. All day. I stand and look and make jokes. Because I get tired of standing. <laughs> That's what I do. But just keep in mind. This all started, once again, with a dream. My dreams are what I wanted to be. Amen. Enough of that personal testimony. Okay, let's get back to this. Now, he's in a position where Pharaoh says, you know what? I want you to handle this for me. I want you to be over everything in my house. Now, the coolest thing about that is when he says, he wanted him to be over everything in his house that something strange happened. In Genesis 41, verse 43, it says this. And he hid and he and and he had him ride in the second chariot, which he had, and they cried out before him, bow the knee. Bow the knee. Which means he was second in command, and when you see him, he had to bow to Joseph too. Uh, just keep in mind that from the beginning, he said, you, you will bow to me. Uh, regardless of everything that happened and everything that I've been through, you are going to bow to me. Now, he, he, here's something strange. Here's something God showed me a, 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 as I was doing it, because I had to eat this first before I gave it to y'all. I mean, literally. God told me this. He says, you know what, through everything you do, every place you've been, here's something I want y'all to get. Your posture determines your position. Hmm? Your posture determines your position. Huh? And what is posture? He says, posture is an attitude or way of behaving under certain circumstances. Huh? So, under certain circumstances, Joseph had to behave a certain way. Because had he not, he couldn't be where he was at. Regardless of what came up, what happened, he believed in his dream. A lot of us don't believe in our dreams. Huh? You don't believe in your dreams. That's why you're in a job you don't like, people you don't like to work around, work around, and you're not happy. Because you refuse to believe that God can make come true what he told you when you were six or seven years old. Huh? He told you you could do that. Huh? So your posture determines your position. What is position? A point of view adopted and held to. So he had a belief, and he held to it. Regardless of what happened or what was going on, he held to it. Because you know when you were little, your parents used to tell you, you didn't think nothing of it. Sit down, sit up in your seat, quit slacking. That ain't good for your posture. Huh? Well, let me tell you this. Drinking, going to the club, lying, fornicating, it ain't good for your posture. Huh? It ain't good for your posture. 
reading your Bible once a week, come to church, act like you're all holy, don't even know where your Bible at, it ain't good for your posture. Huh? And if it ain't good for your posture, there's no way you can get to your position. Huh? There's no way you can get to your position. No way you can get to your position. And, and here's the thing about your posture and your position. God had something in Joseph that he wanted to birth. Y'all been through birth. You know, that's a position that you get in, right? And a certain posture, the doctor tell you, so this won't hurt as much. God bless y'all for having babies. Uh, <laughs> but if you're not in the proper position and your posture is not right, it becomes a very painful thing to have childbirth. God does the same thing with you spiritually. He says, you know what? I need your posture to be correct so I can put you in a position to birth what I told you a long time ago. Huh? Huh? I need you to do that. Second, Second Corinthians 9 and 8. This is what it says. It says this. <clears throat> And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. An abundance. Hey, I got to go. So let me let me wrap this thing up. Okay, so here's what happens now. Joseph had done something. He's overcome the enemy. He's beat rebelliousness. And He's done what he's supposed to do with that particular path, with his particular path. Now, Joseph has done all this. The last thing he has to do, he has to confront his past. Because here's the thing you understand. Through favor, there's some things, some people, some things that happen. But you can't get to where you do till you, till you deal with your past. Because your past, a lot of times, make you do the things that you're doing. Because you didn't love me. Mama did me this. Uncle touched me. So there's some things you have to deal with. You have to deal with your past. To get the position and to get your posture right, to get to your position, you have to deal with your past. Because if you can't deal with your past, you can never get to your future. Huh? You can never get to your future. So he, his brothers come, and he, they confront his brothers. And I thought it was weird because he dealt harshly with them. And I said, God, why did he deal with them so harshly? And he said, you know what? He had to see where their heart was. Because y'all are still the same people who threw me in a pit. Or have you changed? Huh? And through some things that happen, he sees that they've changed. Huh? So he reveals himself. And the one thing he tells them is, you know what? I forgive you. That's what some of you can't get it at. That's what some of you, I have lost your way because you refuse to forgive those who've hurt you. Forgiving the person who hurt you is for them, but it's not all for them. That's for you. Because if you can't forgive them, you can't free yourself of your past. And if you can't free yourself in the past, you can't put yourself in a posture to get to your position. Huh? Just keep in mind. Keep in mind. He tells them what happened wasn't even about you. It was that I could be in a time and place like this that you can live. Had not you done what you done, I couldn't have done what I done. Huh? Had not you done what you done, I couldn't have done what I done. Because what I thought you did to me was wrong, but what you were doing was blessing me. Because in the natural world, it, it was it was setbacks. In the spiritual world, this was steps to build you up to the position I needed you to be in to do what you needed to do. So, in closing, I just want to tell you, you know what? Keep in mind. Keep in mind that he said, I created you and you not yourself. I know the thoughts that I have for you are good and not evil. Huh? Just keep in mind that he wants you to be the head and not the tail. Keep in mind he wants you to bless coming in and going out. Just keep in mind that he wants you to be a borrower and not a lender. Huh? Keep in mind that he's able to do anything except fail. Huh? Just keep in mind that he wants you to have exceedingly abundantly all you could ever think or want or have. But you just got to keep in mind. Keep in mind. Hey, may God bless you. <laughs> hey, may God keep you.